The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and the brothers, you are most welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. And in this Mass, Amanda Joan offers in thanksgiving to God for what he has done for his family, for all the blessings upon his par uh, parents, and especially the God, uh, the God Father, and also all the blessings that he has given her in this life, enabling her to finish her studies. She also continues to pray for God's divine intervention, protection, favor, blessings, and all the gifts of the Holy Spirit upon her mother, siblings, and adopted family of Olak and Our Lady of Africa Church, Mbuya. She prays for the intercession of Mother Mary for the permanent solution to the locusts and the COVID-19 in Uganda. That Lord may have mercy on our nation, Uganda, and he may forgive our sins. The word of God today, we shall hear Jesus in a way talking about the sins of uh, Judas and the sins of Peter, the sin of denial and the sin of betrayal. And these were very close friends of Jesus, always walking with him, and yet they are weak. What about us? Let us also acknowledge our weaknesses, all our sins, so as to prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, Almighty God, unto you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, Grant us to celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's Passion, that we may may to receive your pardon through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the name of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The first reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. Ireland, listen to me. Pay attention, remotest peoples. The Lord called me before I was born. From my mother's womb, he pronounced my name. He made my mouth a sharp sword and hid me in the shadow of his, of his hand. He made me into a sharpened arrow and conceived me in his quiver. He said to me, You are my servant Israel, in whom I shall be glorified. While I was thinking, I have told in vain, I have exhausted myself for nothing. And all the while my cause was with the Lord, my reward with my God. I was honored in the eyes of the Lord, my God was my strength. And now the Lord has spoken. He who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, to gather Israel to him. It is not enough for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back the survivors of Israel. I will make you the light of the nations, 
so that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Our response Psalm, our response shall be, My lips will tell of your help. In you, O oh Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me, free me, pay heed to me, and save me. My lips will tell of your help. Be a rock where you can take refuge. A mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. Free me from the hand of the wicked. My lips will tell of your help. It is you, O oh Lord, who are my hope, my trust. O oh Lord, since my youth, on you I have leaned from my birth. From my mother's womb you have been my help. My lips will tell of your help. My lips will tell of your justice and day by day of your help. Though I can never tell it all, O God, you have taught me from my youth, and I proclaim your wonders still. My lips will tell of your help. Let us stand up for the gospel proclamation. to you, our King, obedient to the Father, you are led to your crucifixion as a meek lamb is led to the slaughterhouse. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. While at supper with his disciples, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, I tell you most solemnly, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, wondering which he meant. The disciple Jesus loved was reclining next to Jesus. Simon Peter signed to him and said, Ask who it is he means. So leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said, Who is it, Lord? It is the one, replied Jesus, to whom I give the piece of bread that I shall dip in the dish. He dipped the piece of bread and gave it to Judas, son of Simon, Issachariot. At that instant, after Judas had taken the bread, Satan entered him. Jesus then said, What are you going to do? What you are going to do, do it quickly. None of the others at the table understood the reason he said this. Since Judas had charge of the common fund, some of them thought Jesus was telling him, by what we need for the festival, or telling him to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the piece of bread, he went out. Night had fallen. When he had gone, Jesus said, Now has the Son of Man been glorified, and in him God has been glorified. If God has been glorified in him, God will in turn glorify him in himself and will glorify him very soon. My little children, I shall not be with you much longer. You will look for me and as I told the Jews where I'm going, you cannot come. Simon Peter said, Where are you going? Jesus replied, 
Where I'm going, you cannot come. You cannot follow me now. You will follow me later. Peter said to him, Why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Lay down your life for me, answered Jesus. I tell you most solemnly, before the cock crows, you will have disowned me three times. This is the gospel of the Lord. My sisters and brothers, as we hear this gospel already to remind us almost uh, of the Lord's Supper, that is on Holy Thursday. Jesus Christ on the table together with his friends. And particularly today, he has touched the aspect of sin in our lives through the sin of Peter and the sin of Judas. And the, they had walked with him, they had stayed with him for three years. Uh, one could say that really they had become so close to Jesus Christ that they could not sin against him because they were close friends. But then what we hear is something different. That Judas, who was very close to Jesus, and even to his brothers, to an extent that they entrusted him to be, to be the, the basa, the, the one, the accountant, the one to keep their money, is the one going to betray Jesus. Peter, as we know him, whom even Jesus had set aside to be the leader of all the rest, the leader, as we can say, the superior, at the end of the day, is the one going to deny Jesus. Maybe you and I, in our spirituality, in our life as Christians, we may be tempted to think that we are strong. I do A, B, C, and D, and so I'm a strong Christian, I'm holy. And we may even, like Peter say, I will never leave you, Jesus. I will always follow you. Maybe at that moment, Peter thought that that would be the case. But Jesus knew what was coming after, that indeed Peter would betray him. And then Jesus Christ somehow reveals of the future of, of Peter that yes, you are weak. You are weak. You will betray me. Lent is a moment of coming in terms with our sinfulness, with our weaknesses. And so it is a moment of really being humble before God to recognize that we are human beings to enter into our sinfulness, our, our dark, the darkness of our lives, and bring it to Jesus Christ to heal. It's not the time of saying, I'm good, I'm holy, I do A, B, C, and D. The sinners are out there. No. It's a moment of seeing our sinfulness and come with contrite hearts and say, forgive me because I'm a sinner. This is what we find in Peter later, after realizing his weakness. He did not run away from Jesus, but rather he saw Jesus face to face. And there is power from the face of Jesus, that once we see Jesus Christ, we fix our eyes on him face to face, our lives can never remain the same. Because there is power that radiates from the face of Jesus, that comes to us to touch us, that comes to us to transform us, that comes to us to bless us. Judas didn't do the same. Instead, he went away. He went away and committed suicide. God gives always a second chance to us. Let this moment be a moment of accepting the second chance that Jesus is giving us to go back to him, to fix our eyes on him, and there we shall find our life. As we said at the beginning of this Holy Week, the Holy Week is a moment of fixing our eyes on Jesus. 
on the love that is being crucified on the cross. And from there we contemplate that strong love that he has for us, that God has for us through his son Jesus Christ. This love which comes to us to bless us, to touch us, to heal us, to give us life and have it to the full. As Peter later will fix his eyes on Jesus, may God give us the grace in these days, coming days, that our eyes may remain fixed on Jesus from where we shall find our life. My sisters and brothers, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. Sacrifice at your hand. Look favorably, O oh Lord, we pray, on these offerings of your family and to those you make partakers of these sacred gifts, grant us in their fullness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is so right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and ever to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of the saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption, Christ, is celebrated. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed, O oh Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make all therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them I do for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is also my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which is poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, we celebrate the more of the death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving so that to await us who are to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your child's praise throughout the world, and bring us the fullness of charity, Together with Francis, our Pope, and Cyprian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember, brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially those who have died in the recent past, and those whose death anniversary occurred today, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, we send Daniel Kumbon, Saint Bakita, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may be to be co heirs with our life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As the Savior has commanded and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, gracious, and grand peace in our days, that by the help of your mass we may be always free from sin, we may be free from this coronavirus, and be always safe from the distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant peace in our days, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God, bore him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. May the blood and blood of Christ keep us safe and bring us to everlasting life. virus pandemic. Oh Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, Keeping your faith firm, you salvation of the people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God, 
Do not disdain our entreaties in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. May your mercy, O Lord, cleanse the people that, you, that are subject to you from all the seduction of former ways and make them capable of new holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our mercy is ended. Let us go to love and serve the Lord.